This is Coogan Cassis for IFL TV in association with Macklin's Gym Marbella. I don't even know where on earth we are. You've just given me a postcode and I've just come here. With me I've got Billy Joe Saunders. Now, this is your new crib around here, isn't it? Yeah, just a uh, little bit of land here, just doing little bits and bobs. Obviously you've moved here now, this is your caravan. So you now. did say I had a place to stay well, here if I wanted it. to listen, come here. Listen, let me tell you, this is your crib now, when you want to come here and that, this is it. Also, if you don't like that, you've got the uh, en suite there. That's, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's good luxury, Google. Can we have a look inside the caravan? Uh, this, is the, this is the horses part. You can't really look inside this caravan at the moment because um, there's on construction work going on in there. They're putting a uh, en suite in, that in there and um, putting upstairs in it. Yeah? At the minute, yeah. Really? Yeah. All right. But that'll be ready for me. Oh, in. whenever, mate. Whenever that'll be ready. If you want to land the tent tonight, you can, but you've got to at least wait. What's in the tent? Oh, that's just, uh, that's just a few bits and bobs. This is our man who's digging down there. That's his, uh, he wants to stay here, so I said, right. His other mate's standing in a trailer, so he can stand the tent. Or because he don't get on with his other pal, so he's moved. Matter of fact, they've had a lover's tiff. One's moved in the tent, one's moved in the uh, in the deluxe caravan. Okay, all right. And whose is that horse up there? This is a horse that I bought yesterday. His name is Young Fury. Named after? Not Tyson Fury, Tyson. This is a breeding of... Uh, yeah, named after Tyson Fury then, because I'm not going to go into it. Young Fury. Yeah? Yeah. This is a boss called Young Fury, it's his brother, isn't it? Alright, he's named out a Young Fury and he's boss his brother. Oh, fair enough. Now, I haven't spoke to you for a couple of weeks. Last time I sp spoke to you was actually at the gym in Bucco still, where you were sparring uh, Jake Ball. Yeah. And then two days after. Yeah. That happened. Yeah, uh, listen, it's, it's one of them things, a complete accident. Um, obviously, it's not done intentionally. Um, Sparring got caught with the elbow, and um, you know, I had to go straight from there. I went straight to Arley Street to make sure that it was looked after proper and done by professionals. And uh, he's done a good job of it. The uh, dissolvable stitches inside, they you know, they, they, it is what it is, they'll be dissolved when, they, when it's ready. Um, but the outside got took out uh, three days ago, got to go back again Thursday. So and he, he said he's happy with it. So you know, I think that I'm looking at back in November ish. End of November, sort of time. Obviously, when the news was first announced, there were before you posted that video of you actually having your, your stitches put in, etc., etc. People were sort of being whatever and saying that you bottled it from the fire. And listen, you're always going to get that. Look, at the end of the day, they have a virus in Ireland. You know, it had to be put back for obvious reasons. Now, I can't go into the biggest fight of my life with a gash on my forehead. Obviously not. And I wanted to, listen, as soon as it happened, I was begging and praying. I went to the doctor, I said, listen, I said, what if I just do a bit of body sparring and work on other things, and I was still gonna go through it. And the doctor said, well, I want that, he said, to be satisfied without getting touched for eight weeks, he said, then you'll be ready to go. I said, so what'll happen if I, he said, I said, what'll happen, I'm fighting in six weeks, da 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 da. If I don't spar, don't get it on it, um, I said, then I'll fight in six weeks. He said, it's up to you, he said, but as my job, he said, I advise you not to leave eight weeks. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, obviously, I'm gutted, but it's just, it happens, Coogan, you know what I mean? It's like going, getting ready to go out to work and your car blows up or something like that. It's, if I'd have been, if, I, if, if this would have happened, if I would have been out on a motorbike or out on a bike, fell off, fell off, hit me head, then obviously that it'd be a different story because I feel like committing suicide. I think what an idiot I am. But I'm getting ready for the job, you know. And you know, Jake Ball genuinely didn't mean to do it. It's, a, it's an accident. Caught with elbow. You can't do nothing about it. You got to get on with it. And you know, the dates are what it is now. When it first originally happened, which I believe it was not Friday gone, the Friday before, um, did you realise it was that bad? Well, when I was sparring, I came in. And I remember like, I was just ready to duck for a body shot. And I sort of like, it was like a halfway duck and he threw an hook. And as he threw an hook, he missed with the hook, but I was still in line. Missed the hook with his, with his fist, obviously, which I wish I'd never know. And I was in line with the top of the head, with the elbow. And there's quite a nasty gash. And straight away, I, I thought, 
as soon as it happened, I thought, that's a cut. I thought, please don't let that be a cut. And I went to go in again, I'll see the blood come down. And uh, Jimmy got me to the corner, had a look, stopped the sparring and looked at it. And I, I realised that it wasn't just a little a little cut, like a little couple of weeks off sparring cut. It's obviously affected the fight. But listen, this fight is definitely going to go ahead. You know, a mandatory, you know, it's a, it's a minor setback. It's, what is it now? It's not like you've got to wait another year for it. It's an extra eight weeks again, all right? It's eight weeks again, and you know it's, I've been a, probably a bit unlucky, but you can't. I can't really do anything about it. If I could get it sewed up and give me a chance, ninety percent chance it ain't gonna come undone. I say right, let's do it. But when you've got all odds stacked against you, that I'll probably get a jab on it or something that's gonna come undone. And it's, it's listen, it's not like Anderley's a journeyman who's not gonna hit you because he's a world class fighter. Do you know what I mean? And you have got to be hundred percent when you're going into them them sort of fights. End. My world title fight. I don't want to go in there and if I got beat on a cut, saying I should listen to the doctor because it's enough to make you want to give up boxing, wouldn't it? If you, you made that sort of mistake. You say it's a minor setback, but would you say it was the biggest setback of your career so Obviously, far? Obviously, yeah, fighting for a world title. Um, my chance really to be where I want to be. Um, and yeah, definitely, it's, 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 it's the biggest setback of my boxing career so far, definitely. Um, but I've got to deal with that. Uh, you know, and there's only one way to deal with it. I mean, I can start me running back up, start me running back up from Thursday, once the uh, stitches inside dissolve. And, you know, it's all back in the gym then, back ready to get ready, getting ready for the fight again. Where do you think this fight will take place now? I don't know, listen, it's, I'm happy to go anywhere with it, you know. It's, I'm, it's one of them fights that I don't care where it is, it's my world title fight, I'm happy to go anywhere with it. And, you know, it'd be nice to get it, you know, it'd be nice to have it back at Manchester. Um, it'd be unbelievable, but, you know, it is what it is. If it's, if it's in Scotland, it's got to go. China, it's got to happen. It'll happen somewhere. So I'm not really bothered where it happens. Would it more, make more sense for the fights to happen in London, there? Well, I think that it would, yeah. You know, if you can get a venue big enough. But, you know, I know dates is hard and whatnot, but, you know, I think that also people need to look at the patients, not only with me and Andy Lee here, what's happened here, but also Frank Warren and Adam Booth, really, because, you know, they're still working together to make this fight happen for the public, and uh, I think that they're doing a very, very good job. Some people have just tried to swerve it around other ways and left it dead in the water, but it's clearly not. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a big fight. You know, it's one of them fights that I need this fight now. I really do need it. I just want to get in there. I want to be world champion. I'm 26 now, and I feel like it's my time. You know what I mean? I don't want to leave it and leave it and leave it till you lose that sort of fire for the world title. I, I go to bed every night thinking about it, but these cuts happen and I can't do anything about it. I've got to wait. Simple as that. Does any part of you think that this fight is cursed and not meant to happen? No, no, no. Listen, it's one of them things. First of all, Limerick, you know, whatever reason, virus, whatnot else, it happened. Yeah, it got moved. To be honest with you, I don't think this fight a sale as big in Limerick. Um, if I was Irish, and he's obviously Irish from the both backgrounds, then it'd be a little bit different, you know, like a, obviously a Macklin uh, Lee fight. It might be a different story, but it's not that. Um, it's not curse, it's just that it's, we've had, we've had a, I've had a freak accident, really, sparring the last day of sparring before I headed out to Marlborough MGM, and that happened. So, not really I could do about it. And obviously, does any part of you, looking back on it, think the other world title opportunities you've had that you've had to pass on and et cetera, et cetera? Uh, not, not really, Coogan, because I got a deal to step aside. I got a deal to step aside and a plan with the WBO. I, just, I, I haven't just uh, turned that opportunity down and it's all done for a reason because I, I've got good people around me and it's what I think's planned out for me. And I got to step aside. <sighs> I know some people's box for world titles and didn't get what I got. Just to step aside. You know, and it is about you know, it's, it's, it's about getting money right, you know, it's all boxing's about money and obviously I love the game, but at the end of the day, when you hang your gloves up, I don't wanna be sitting there looking at a cabinet full of belts and have not a pound in my pocket. Do you know what I'm saying? 
It's about money, and it made good financial sense for me to step aside. And, and it worked. It has worked for me because Peter Cullen ain't got the toll, Andy Lee's got it, and it looks like to be happening in London or England or Manchester, wherever it is, if it's in Ireland it's there. So I ain't got to go to America for it. But, you know, I think it's, just, it's something I can't help with getting cut. And I think, you know, it's a good reason to say, listen, let's just hold it up for eight weeks or nine weeks, what it's going to be, and we'll get it on before Christmas. Because if you, if you look, if you look at it, all right, there's bigger fights. You say Andy Lee could go and fight Golovkin, but is he going to come back with his world title? He's right, getting a few quid, and where is it? me and Andy's a 50-50 fight. So uh, there's no really bigger money fight for Andy at the minute. I don't reckon than me. You've had to wait all this time anyway, so another eight weeks out. Well, listen... It's, it doesn't matter, really, does it? It is what it is. I'm mandatory, yeah? So it's, it's, it is eight weeks out. I eight, I can't do nothing for eight weeks. Obviously, I'm not going to go into a world title fight, Coogan, with two weeks of sparring. Do you know what I'm saying? Everything's got to be right for me, and obviously Andy as well. I'm not saying Andy's got to sit around and wait, obviously, for six, seven months. It's not that. If it was that the case, I'd say, well, you know, let Andy go and do what he's got to do, and we'll look for this fight again. But it's not the case. It's just... I've had the stitches out now, it's healing lovely, and I've just got to listen to the doctor, I've got to listen to the professional, and that's what I'm doing. Can we have a look? You, if I pull it off, that means I've got to like fuck about again, but I don't know if this can... Coogan, you got it on your phone, mate. I'm going to have to pull it in the mirror in a minute and I'll show you. Get it on camera. Just for people that think you've done it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I've got hammer. And hit myself in the forehead with it. Um, well, listen, middleweight division is thriving. Obviously, Golovkin and Mew next month, uh, domestically also. So, just get yourself amongst it and... Who's domestically? What? Domestically, who? Middleweights? Well, domestically, I don't know. Middleweights. You? Yeah. Spike? Yeah. Mewbank? Retired. Well, I don't know if he's retired. Now, all jokes aside, um, since I've beat him, he's, you've not seen too much about of him, have you? Like always. We well, fought Chudinov in, yeah, but, in February. All right, Chudinov. All right, Chudinov. He's boxed. All right. Um, who else has he boxed? Because I've been hearing he's been offered a lot of fights. I'm not going to mention no names of some other southpaws, and he's turned down. So. Listen, Eubanks is just waiting for me, waiting to see what I want to do and waiting to see when I come back to the world title. But he'll be waiting for nothing anyway. He's got to go and earn his shot now. I'm not giving nobody, keep giving shots. Do you know what I mean? This is fucking ridiculous. He's, he's retired. I have genuinely retired him. He's had one fight since I beat him. Or I've only had one fight. But I was in a line for two fights. Andy got virus, then this has happened. So that's the only reason why I've had my old back. He ain't had no injury. He's retired. I've retired him. I've done. I've just retired him. Yeah. Put him in his place. Tucked him up in bed for a bit. Let him lay down and wait. Well, he's a bit strange actually. He hasn't fought since February, and what we're in September now. Yeah, yeah. I think that he's got to um. Listen, he's got to go and fight some hard domestic. Look at me, for example. John Ryder, Nick Blackwell, uh, Spike, all them boys, uh, the all unbeaten fighters, the uh, Italian, etc., etc. You've got to go in there and, and improve yourself. I feel I've proved myself the best in Britain. I feel that the only one, obviously, I didn't fight is Mac, uh, Matthew Macklin. Um, he was fighting, but he's been fighting at eye level for a long time. Um, Tom, I've got up there, he's eased off a bit now. Uh, Martin Murray, I was, I was, uh, I was his British title mandatory, ready to fight. He vacated, and you know he had. He had bigger fish to fry really at the time because he was looking for world titles. He's moved up a weight now. And I am the best middleweight in Britain. And I proved it. I think with you, Bank, people say to me that, yeah, but he had a good fight of you. He was coming on strong. Yeah, perhaps he did. He was coming on strong. But when you're in this, when it's so easy, when it's so easy for five or six rounds, it's so easy I could shut my eyes and beat him. It's just one of them, it's just one of them things you are switched off. And, you know, any top-class fighter, I tell you, when you switch off, you can't just switch it on and off like a light switch. You've got to stay focused. That's what boxing's about, stay focused. 
and you know not losing not losing the game plan I let the game plan slip a little bit but I still beat him comfortably and to be honest with you that was a, a poor night for me really I reckon I feel you know and I, I still done the job he ain't he's got to be out there and fight he's got to go and fight why not fight for the British title he wanted the British title so you can't tell me that he's better than British level now he's not coming back down if someone offered Matthew Macklin the British title Martin Murray it'd be a little bit of a a little bit of a piss take, really, because the level they've boxed at. But him, he's been beat for the European title. So why not go down, try to win the British title, or whatever he wants to win, to prove himself. And time, if he could be doing that now, time I fight Andy Lee, I'll beat him. I'll give him a shot if he's earned his right and beat a few of the boys. But until then, there's, uh, there's more people in front of him, I think, in Britain. Trust me, he's not as good as what people think. And if he was, he wouldn't be ducking out of fights that he's been offered by Frank. And I know Frank pays him well. Frank's been paying him well. And, um, you know, what, what more better do you want? He's fighting regularly. He can fight as regularly as he wants. But he's just ducking the big fights for some reason. He keeps wanting to fight people from Russia and names you can't pronounce. All right. Well, Billy Joe, I hope you heal your cut heals up quickly yeah and you get back into action should we go and see the elves no but I can show you a dog no I don't want to see the dog I'm going to, I can't you can see the horse Google. what do you want to get close to an horse for look why do you want to go close to that you can see the horse from here do you want me to show you the dog no why because that dog is likely to probably tear off limbs I've got a video, I'm going to have to put it on Facebook, of Coogan in a stable a minute ago screaming not to let it go because I trapped him and he wouldn't come out. I think anyone in that position would have done the same thing. Give me the... You put the video on Facebook, but send it to me and I'll put it on YouTube. Yeah? Yeah. I don't mind. All right, well, let's, let me video. Yeah, I'll give you a head start. We'll give you 150 yards head start. you only got to make 50 yards to the gate. Then I'll let the dog go. No. And we'll put it on YouTube. No. It'll be funny. Coogan now get a lot of it. Matter of fact, I'll tell you what that would probably do. That will put you on ITV. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Seriously, I'm out for that. No? Why would you want to do that anyway? Just to see see how you know, see how far you've lost a bit of weight, you know, you're looking fit. I wanna see I wanna see it put to work. I'll have, I'll have to pass. But like I say, if ever you wanna come and stay, anybody, um it's the guest house here. Guest house on wheels. You're entitled to come and stay whenever whenever you want, right? All right. Yeah? All right, Billy Joe Saunders, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. And, what, do uh, reckon, what do you reckon the well is? You dress very appropriately. Listen, let me tell you, I've been working. Listen, I've been, I've been, I've been working like a slave, to be fair. Seriously. Yeah? I've been slaving myself, yeah, digging and going, just keeping busy, really. Yeah. Keep your mind off the cut. Keep your mind off the cut. I, do you know what? You've got to be careful because... I, I, I can't do too much, that's why I've got some lads working for me. That's very unprofessional, Kogan. Do you see it is? Yeah. Britney Spears, is it? Who was that? I don't know. Oh. Yeah, so, um, that's about it then, Kogan. Alright, well listen. Anything else you want to cover? No, we're alright, thank you. Just wanted to catch up with you. What else did I want to say? I wanted to say something. Hmm, I forgot now. Uh, do you know what, Coogan, I did, I genuinely forgot. Oh, that was it. Who thinks that I could only cut myself and go and fuck your mothers? <laughs> Seriously, all fucking for you. Stupid, though, Coogan. I'll get a lot, listen, I'll get a lot of shit on Twitter. I keep getting all the pikey talk, mate. What's all this about? This is a racist. Coogan, if they start getting a racist with you, you report them, wouldn't you? I won't report them. You would, mate, you'd report them. I won't report them. You'd call the police on them. <laughs> I won't be doing that. <laughs> you just do a Curtis Woodhouse on one of them. Yeah, I'd I love to. I would, seriously. Yeah? Yeah. People don't realise what an offensive word the, the P word is. What, what? Oh, for you or me? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm saying, mate? What? The P word. Yeah. It's, for it's, you? Oh, for both of us, really. It's, it is offensive, to be fair. All right, it laughs a laugh, but all the pikey chat and this and that. I'm not even a pikey. What? I'm a gypsy, aren't I? I'm, gypsy. A, I'm a gypo. A traveller. Gypsy traveller, yeah, I'm a born a Romney Romney gypsy, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's about, to be honest, is what I wanted to cover, that's about it, really. All right, All right Bill, thanks for talking to IFL TV, yeah, and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. All right.